This is Andy Tube, and this video is about the feed regulator system on the Singer Model 403A. Now it's interesting because in the instruction manual for the slantomatics like this, Singer calls this the stitch regulator when they talk about what it's for and how to use it. But in the parts manuals and the service manuals, it's called the feed regulator. And as a mechanic, that makes more sense because what, what it does is uh, sets how far the feed dog travels with each up and down motion of the needle bar. So when you, when you put it all the way down to the number six, it moves the fabric and the feed dog moves the fabric at about six stitches per inch. And as you move it up, like say to 12, it doesn't move the fabric as far, allowing for more stitches per inch, like 12, and so forth. When you put it all the way up, it changes the motion of the feed dog to pull the fabric towards you what we call reverse sewing. So in this in this video I'm going to take it apart and put it back together and I'm going to uh, explain how it works. But this is the part you see, right? This is this is the part that that everybody sees when they when they look at it. It looks simple enough, right? You have this lever and you have a little thumb nut here that allows you to lock it in place if you so desire. Like if you want to sew a 10 and you lock your stitch in on 10 by turning to the right, it's going to stay on 10 and if you sew in reverse and go up, it'll sew in reverse and when you push it back down it's going to stop right on 10 so you can continue your forward sewing. And this is this is called the stitch indicator plate make makes sense it's indicating the length of the stitches and whether it's in reverse or forward okay and then what we call the lever is is really the hmm, feed regulator stud and on this stud is a articulating thumb nut that you turn left and right Inside this stud is a little slide, and that's what that thumb nut does, is, is push the slide up against the indicator plate to lock it, or pulls the slide away from the indicator nut. And then there's a little uh, stud washer and a screw to, to hold that on. That's it. Simple enough, right? But this is what the actual regulator looks like. Okay. Now I know this is gold and this is silver. Uh, I think this is from a 500A or 503 and that's why it's gold. But it's the exact same parts. And uh, so basically you kind of see this much sticking out of the indicator plate. But the stud goes into the actual feed regulator and then this big hinge screw goes in from below the hand wheel to hold it in place okay and the way it regulates is inside the upright you have this forked feed connection and it and it goes from an eccentric up on the on the horizontal uh, arm up here that makes it like this and it goes down and then attaches to the feed rock shaft and that feed rock shaft goes over and next to the feed rock lifting shaft and the feed bar and that's what moves the feed dog okay and on this feed forked connection there is this little thing called the slide block. And that's where this part connects inside the machine. The slide block 
goes in that big groove, right? And and the and whoops, need my third hand here. This um, hinge screw holds it all in place like this in the machine. And then as you move this up and down, it slides along that slide, pushing the forked uh, connection into a different angle to move the feed rock shaft in a different way. Okay, so that's all the stuff that you don't see that's part of this system. So I'm going to show you how to take this stuff apart if you want to. Most commonly the reason people want to do this is because somebody bent this stud. Uh, I, had, I have a very nice viewer who sent me an email with some pictures that the stud was gone and somebody had put just like a bolt in there and she couldn't get it the longer stitch you know and, and she said why why even though I'm putting this thing, lever down all the way I'm not getting a, like a number six I'm only getting about an eight or a ten and it turns out in the picture I could see hey that's not a stud that's 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 not a smooth stud it was silver and it had threads so I sent her some pictures and explained and a link to a couple videos and so she bought the parts and took it out and she changed everything. So that's a common repair on this. Um, the other common repair is uh, maybe this falls off or gets real dirty. So somebody takes it apart and then can't figure out how to get it back together. Some people who uh, just enjoy collecting machines or want it to look nice, the gold paint on here can get all scratched up over the years and people will buy an indicator plate a used one that's clean and pretty and they'll want to change it out and they'll say hey how do, how do I get this stuff off so I'm going to show you how a singer singer doesn't talk about getting this stuff off they just talk about how to take the regulator out and put it back in so I'm going to show you that first and then I'm going to show you how to uh, disassemble all this and stuff in case you don't want to take the regulator out. It's rare that something goes wrong with the regulator, the hinge screw, or the slide. That's rare. This can get like when I first got this part, I could not budge the slide. It was just like frozen in there and I still can't take this screw out but the slide just slides on <laughs> it's not screwed on so by, by soaking that with WD-40 I was able to wiggle it off you know and so it turns real easy it's, and, and flexes of course that's that's what makes the problem when you go to put this back together but we'll we'll get there later <laughs> So let me let me rearrange this a little and we'll get started. What we start with is this indicator plate to, to remove this. And on the plate there's two little brown screws, one at the top left corner and one down here at the bottom right. Okay. And uh, these screws are what, what I call the soft metal. If you saw my video about the positioning indicator plate here and those two screws like this. So just be sure you have a good fitting slot uh, tip to go in there. And I have seen these practically glued on with green gunk. And uh, so don't, don't be afraid to uh, spray some WD-40 on there. Um, you know to, to try and loosen them if, if they're stubborn but uh, usually with a good fitting screwdriver you can uh, back them out and it's lefty loosey so they come right out and these are not as long as the ones on the throat plate uh, bracket because they're just holding this little indicator plate um, onto the machine okay so 
So have have something nice, whatever you use, to keep your little parts in, so we don't we don't lose them. And we'll go up and we'll do the upper left one here. Mm -hmm. Now sometimes right right at this point, the indicator plate falls off. It just beep, and sometimes it doesn't. <laughs> And sometimes it's it's difficult to get off, but when it comes off, it's just going to hang on the stud. Okay, there, just going to hang on the stud like that. And we see some of this stuff. I think this is brass. I'll show you the back of it in a minute, but I think that's what all this green stuff comes from. But anyway, this is how they say to do it: take the indicator plate off and put the lever down. Okay, so I'm just going to leave it like that for a moment because we got to turn the machine and get in here. So you notice I've got the hand wheel off of this, right? Yep, I got the hand wheel off. So uh, if you need to know how to take off the hand wheel assembly, there's a video for that in the playlist for Regina. A Singer Model 403A. And at the end of the video, I'll put a link to uh, the playlist and I'll put a link straight to the hand wheel uh, video. Okay. Now, let me see. Inside, there's my little flashlight here. Oops. Okay, sorry, I got it. Uh, I don't know if I lift this up a little, if we can see it better. Oh, yeah, maybe we can get the light in there a little bit. And there. There you go. You see this end of this big old uh, hinge screw. Okay. And uh, if you do take this off, you might be the first one to ever do it. So it might be kind of stubborn. You can, you can spray around in there. And you can actually spray, since you have the indicator plate off, you know, you can kind of peek in there. And you can and you can see the inside there, and you can try and put some uh, penetrating oil where the sc screw feeds into the regulator. And you can also put a socket. I've had to take these off with a, you know, using a quarter inch socket or my uh, little mini ratchet from Chapman to to break that free. I'm sorry, I don't remember the socket size. It might be five eighths, but I, 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 I don't remember offhand. But that's what we're looking at is where that is hidden behind the hand wheel, and uh, <clears throat> oh, that's a good thing to tell you. When you turn this, the lever is going to go down. And I've had people turn this so hard trying to break the screw free that when this went down against the frame, they damaged their plate or they bent the stud. Hmm. So uh, I usually like to, can you see what I did there? I turned the plate upside down. I just swung it on the stud. And just just stick something in there a little bit to protect it just a little bit. So if it's very hard, put some penetrating uh, oil inside. But you saw this one move, right? See how it's moving there? So I know it's going to come out. There we go. So when you when you take this out the actual stud and regulator are going to be sitting on the slide. Now that's normal. That's how it should be. So you can pull the stud out um, without anything falling apart inside. Okay, I've got it loose now. Uh, let me see if my little magnet will pull it out or if I need pliers. Yeah. I thought I had it loose. Maybe not. 
doesn't seem to be coming out anymore. There we go. Okay. So I might as well explain this while I got it here. This is a spring that keeps tension on this hinge screw so that when you lift the lever and so forth, it keeps that uh, hinge screw in there. And it's, it's uh, very heavy. It's probably about the heaviest spring on the machine. And then there's a uh, what's called a spring seat, S-E-A-T. It's like this weird washer. And you see it's got these two legs that, whoop, like that stick down on the bottom, right? And when, when you put it in, you'll notice this is kind of notched down. That's the position that it goes in. Just like that. We'll show you. And then here's the here's the hinge uh, screw. It's almost like a bolt, right? <laughs> but they call it a hinge screw. Mm-hmm. Okay, so we got those parts off. Now let's go see if I can turn this back here without destroying anything. And we'll see that with this upside down you can see a little better in here and it looks like it's already kind of fallen off of the slide block. Remember the slide block I showed you? Right? It looks like it's already fallen off of that. So I'm just going to pull it right out. And there you go. It's as dry as a bone. This isn't uh, anything about oiling. This is not in the instruction manual. So, you know, I've bought uh, slantomatics from people that owned them 20 and 30 years, and and uh, if they took it in once a year to the Singer store when the Singer store was still open. They did oil this and the slide block, um, but Singer went out of business uh, in the 80s. So you know, sold sold the company, but their stores closed a, a long time before that. Now, I don't think you're going to be able to. Well, maybe. Let's see. I'll try. <clears throat> Let's see if I can get my light in there. Kinda, you can kind of see that slide block. Let me turn it so the end of the block is there. See, there it is. I don't know if going. I can't. I can't get a light on it from above. Really. Mhm. Mm so when you put this back in, you you have to get that regulator back onto that uh, slide and that's the here's the back of that plate right and uh, kind of gunky they always look kind of weird and modeled like that and, and they don't clean up for, I mean you can get surface you can get the surface grease or oil or anything off of there but some of that modeling or staining, I, I haven't gotten out. But uh, this you can clean all off. And if you wanted to service it, you, you could just loosen that uh, indicator plate and, and drop it down or turn it to the side and go in and put some oil on, on the slide area. And then work it up and down just to get some oil on that slide. Okay. okay now comes the uh, tricky part I told you about. <laughs> and this is definitely the hardest part about removing and replacing the uh, regulator. 
Uh, I usually lay the machine down on its back, shine a light up the bottom, and try and work from like the top down looking into here. And uh, sometimes I've um, tried to stick a barbecue stick from the top or bottom to, to kind of try and keep that slide from spinning. That's not always uh, successful. Um, but my friend in Canada told me how he used to do it was to just, after he cleaned the regulator, he just put some oil up around this end. And uh, uh, let's see, where's my, where's my model here maybe? Instead of trying to slide it directly on from the end, because you see how how easy it turns. <laughs> um, what he said was to, to try and get just the tip around the side of it. There's not enough room in here between the slide and the casting of the upright to stick it all the way in um, next to it and push it on from the side. But he said sometimes you can put it at a little angle and just get get this end of it on the end of the slide like that, and then uh, the idea is you you move it sideways. Then, okay, uh, well I had it, yeah, just kind of like that. And then you straighten it up and move it sideways and push it on. So I said, wow, that, that's, that, you know, I've done it here just right now like a couple times. And it's like, boy, that, that is kind of easier, uh, you know. So the trick will be, can I do it while the slide block is in the upright? <laughs> and, and I'm sorry, I, I'm probably going to... Can you even see the end of the slide in there? It's kind of dark. But using my finger, I'll just put it in an angle so the end of the slide is facing me. And uh, I'll just try it. And I figure, well, if it doesn't work, I can, see, it still wants to turn. I can go back and lay it on its back that way. And, and he's right, when I try and push the whole thing down the side, it doesn't seem like there's quite enough room. But if I could just get that end started. And of course, you, you don't have a lot of light in there to work with. And of course, the block still wants to, you know, spin away from you. Wow, look at that. It's on there. Just gonna hold it there. That that is like the fastest <laughs> I've ever gotten a slide block back on <laughs> in my life. Wow. So I'm definitely gonna have to thank him for that. Whew, okay. Oh don't don't slide off. See it wants to come right off so Maybe I'll, because uh, I still have to see in there to, to kind of try and line it up with, um, I'm, look, I'm so nervous it's going to slide off, right? <laughs> you know, I hold it up like that. I still have to uh, line up the hole for the, the hinge screw. Right, this hole back here. So, let me get my hinge screw. I should have put this all together before I did this, huh? So I could just pick it up. But the first thing that, that goes on is this spring seat with the legs down like that so that it will go into that notched area. And then let's see if I can get my spring on. 
so and again you, it's kind of hard to see in there now you could I don't know I tried putting my flashlight at the top but it didn't work that well Let's see if I can just get that hinge screw into the hole with that seat pointed down okay I got that part yeah I could disassemble this and take the indicator plate off I guess and have a little bit better better look in there I can I can see when I'm pushing on this it's it's hitting something like the side of the regulator so I'm trying to manipulate the regulator around to line up that hole now when it's laying on its back what I'll do sometimes is put um, like my barbecue stick in there because it's kind of got that little pointed end and I'll wiggle it around and try and find where is that hole screw hole on the regulator See if I turn this sideways and uh, it seems like you can slide it a little bit on the slide and you can move it up and down <laughs> See if I moved it way down and looked over the top. Now it seems like the hole's way too low. And I think, yeah, I think up. I think I've, I think I've maybe got the barbecue stick in the hole of the regulator. So I'm just going to try and hold the regulator steady at that spot. And make sure you get that legs on that seat pointed down because uh, I forgot about that a couple times and you finally get the screw in there and start tightening it and those legs are not down and to loosen it enough to get the legs down you have to take the screw back out and that's really very wow I can't, I can't, I don't feel like I'm in the hole. Darn it. I, uh, maybe I was to the side of it or something. Oh, wait a minute. I pulled the regulator towards me a little bit. Oh, now I felt the screw go farther into the machine about a quarter of an inch. So by moving this towards me and kind of up towards the top to help line up the holes better so I'm gonna double check that my okay good that seat spring has the legs down in the notch so I'm going to tighten this up some so I'm not worried about it coming out and see am I am I really Oh, look at that. See that? I, man, it really felt like it was in there, too. <laughs> That'll teach me. Let me put a little oil on this. If you see about the first sixteenth of an inch of this screw on here, it doesn't have any threads on it. So, what, what I'm trying to do is line up that hole in there and get this in because you can push it in without turning it you know like look it goes it goes in pretty good and that's when I was going like this I felt I had it in there but I must have been to the side oh see then I pulled it right off of the slide again so let me get it back on the slide okay that that took a good couple of minutes getting it back on the slide 
while I was doing that, I I uh, remembered that um, the uh, fork feed forked forked feed connection that shaft actually kind of moves up and down too. So it seems to me like before I was pushing this up, it seems like if I tilt it, I can move that forked feed connection up and down. And I think I had the hole a little bit low last time. But I'm still going to try with my barbecue stick because I feel like I have more control with that. That's no, still not quite... <laughs> Just not, just not a lot of room to look and see what you're doing in there. I'll try and move it, slide a little bit closer to me. I'm so nervous of pulling that slide off again. Because it's just tricky to get on there. That's all there is to it. When you have the machine laying on, on its back, okay, um, the, the feed regulator slides down on the slide once you have it on there. So it's much less likely that it's going to, you know, slip, slip off, right? So you feel a little more secure. And this is the first time I really tried to do it with the machine standing upright. I think I'm I think I'm behind the behind the hole in there. Maybe that's it now. I can't I'm trying to push the slide back or the stud back and forth on and move it on the slide and I can't do it. So I might have it where it needs to be. Can I hold it there long enough to get this in with the the little tails are leg down. It's like uh, rubbing your tummy and patting your head, right? <laughs> uh, I can tell it's it's not that screw is not going into the hole. Now it went in again farther, so that might have been it. Let's see if I can pull the slide or push it. No. Nope. That might be it. So I'll take a chance again and try using my screwdriver on that hinge screw and see is it really going to go into the feed regulator. Hmm. I, I think it is because I'm feeling resistance from that big tension spring now. Not going to tighten it all the way. Oh, thank you. I did get it on this time. Yay. Hey. So, let me put this up right here. Mm -hmm. It's way too loose because I haven't tightened this up. But I'll talk about that in a little bit. But I definitely have the regulator back on the slide block and the hinge screw all the way through into the regulator. Whew. Okay, so let's talk about this for a minute now, okay? Um, of course, I, I would put my two little screws back on here, right? I want to show you, because um, I probably have you convinced by now that you're not going to take the regulator off. The slide block, right? <laughs> and, uh, you know, like I said, unless you have to replace this stud or there's something just totally needs to be replaced, I, uh, you know, don't worry about taking it off necessarily if you don't have to. But you can easily take these parts on the end off and you can you can with those off you can slide off the indicator plate and you can see it in there 
and you can uh, oil it, you can clean it, um, and so forth. Um, so I, wa I want to show you these. I'm going to do it like on the machine. So you, you would probably normally still have your screws in, right? And I don't remember this being in the service manual. So take a good look at this in case you want to do it. But uh, on, on the end here is a very short screw that holds the washer, that holds the thumb nut, that holds the slide to the stud. And you can take those all off and you just, I'll turn it at a little angle here so I can get my screwdriver in. You just start with this, uh, oh, turn the thumb nut all the way to the left. Okay. And then you can remove this screw. And usually the washer is going to stick on there just like it did here. Um, and that's, that's because it's, the stud has a big split in it for the slide to go in and out. And, and you almost have to pinch those two sides of the stud together to get this uh, washer on. So that's why if it's on properly, it'll kind of stay there. And then you just flick it off with your uh, fingernail like that. Okay, and it's just a flat uh, washer. So now, look, you, 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 have a, you have a couple ways to go. Because the slide that's in here has the threads on it for the thumb nut. The stud itself does not have any, you know, it doesn't have any threads. It's just got a slide going in the slot and and then these three pieces to um, move the slide back and forth or front to back you know so with with it like this much done you can pull everything out and then you hold on to the slide and unscrew Okay, so let, let me show you that method. Okay, see there's no, there's no threads on the outside. There's some threads on the end inside to hold the little end screw. But you can, you can see that slide now. Okay, and you can see at the end of it here, it's split to hold the screw tip. So if you have it like this, then you can turn it to the right, not lefty-loosey. This is righty-loosey. If you hold on to the slide, you turn it to the right, and you will unthread the thumb nut from the threads on the slide. There. So you see this open space at the end is for, for the screw to fit in there. And on the outside of these little, I don't know, wings, I guess, are the threads that line up with the threads in here. So to reassemble this, you would turn it lefty tidy, just the opposite. Okay. And you get it up here so it's pretty close to the end. Okay. So when you take, let me put that back on now. So, so when you take the little screw and washer off, you can pull it off like I just showed you. Oops. You would normally leave this screwed. Or you can unthread it right there on the stud by turning it to the right. Since the slide is in the slot of the stud, it's like you holding the slide. So you can you can just take it off like this. You're just unscrewing it from the slide. Okay. Then you can uh, 
move that move that slide out and grab a hold of it and there you go okay now that you have it like this take your two screws out and the plate will hang from that stud then if you put the stud down you can move the plate up near the fine area and take it off now you can clean all the parts you just took off and you can see the regulator sitting on the slide block okay and you can uh, to, to clean it now uh, I'll do a cleaning video later for the whole machine but I would spray some crud cutter in there and work it back and forth and stuff and then of course do the same thing in the shower maybe some of you haven't seen that how I clean the whole machine in the shower but just to like normal service it here with that off you can go in and put a drop of oil or two right on the end of that slide and start working this back and forth so that's going to spread the oil on the slide um, in in this track right here. So you're, oil, you're putting the oil like right right here at the front of that slide. Okay, then moving it, the slide will go back and forth. The other thing you can do is put a drop of oil where the slide block meets the uh, you know it's it's on here like this right and you can you can put a, a drop of oil right oh, third hand <laughs> third hand Let's try this like that you see that so you're, you're kind of in there in the machine. You put a drop of oil in the slide. And you put a drop of oil up on the top of the slide. Right there between the regulator. And the forked connection. And you work that in. Okay. So you don't have to take the regulator out per se. You can see this would be a lot easier to do. Okay. Now, um, of course, then I, I better I better show you how to put it all back together here. So we'll work that on. Like I said, the fine area. Let me explain. See this that. fine area have has a place for the slide to go into in the back. So that creates a little bit wider of an opening for you to work the indicator plate on okay then you would want to go ahead and screw on your indicator plate and then uh, I put the slide in the stud now you could you could put this slide into the thumb nut if you want I just put it in the stud and push it in and you'll see that those uh, ends of the slide are about even with the stud. Okay. On the 403, the slide has one tab on the left. When they went to the uh, 500s, the Rocketeers, they put a different slide that had a tab on each side. Okay. But the slide comes from the factory with the tab on the left. But if you're used to setting your your stitches, uh, you know, at six, eight, twelve on the on the even side, you could flip flip the slide around. There, there's no rule that says the tab has to be on the left. You could flip it over to the right and put it on that way. If you if you'd rather have the indicator tab on the right, I think Singer put it on the left because if as you're sitting facing your machine, your your vision is more towards this left side. 
you know. But I'm just saying, okay? Since you're the head mechanic of this machine now, you can put this back together however will work for you. So when you get the slide in there uh, evenly into the stud and push back, then the next thing you're going to do is put the thumb nut. Okay. Now some of these, like these, these are just slightly rounded off on both sides. Some of them that I've done, one side is very flat and the other you can definitely see like a bull nose. If you have a bull nose non-perfectly flat end, put that towards the indicator plate. And put it up there and gently turn it lefty left to tighten it. And just gently don't don't force it on there. Just be sure that you have it worked on to those little tiny teeth on this on the slide, okay? And then you're going to put that on all of the way here. And you'll notice that the stud just barely sticks out from the thumb nut. Just barely sticks out towards you a tiny bit. And that's so that you can put the washer on it. Okay. You'll feel it kind of springy and go on there. Once that's on, now you can put in the retaining screw. And, and it does tighten to the right. I was this slot is too small for my spring driver, so I'll see if I can get it started with my my fingertips. And again, that's screwing into the inside of the stud. Just be sure you've got it properly in there. And then you want to tighten this uh, very well. And it should tighten. You know, if you've installed the thumb nut the way I told you, it should tighten nice and tight. Because the stud split cannot spread because it's being held in place. If you have your thumb nut way towards the back and you screw this in, it's like it won't tighten, it'll spread the screw. So just put it the way I said. Just put it on there and, and uh, tighten it. And it should just leave the stud sticking out enough to put the washer on. Right? Okay. So now you have this back together. When you have it back together now, you should be able to turn it to the right. And make sure that your slide starts moving towards the indicator plate. I'm just going to lock the stitch in at say 10. And then up to reverse and down to 10. Okay. And then it should back out, turning it left this time to go all the way down to 6. Now, right now it's very loose. And I've seen these so loose that when, when you're sewing that they jump around and they'll creep. <laughs> and that's because of the adjustment on that hinge screw okay that's the reason for that big tension spring is that you can tighten this to the resistance that you like okay and you you watch now as I tighten this I'm gonna it's gonna get to a point where this goes up Yep, see, it's right there. So, when it does that, then try it. Is that firm enough for you? It has to be kind of firm so that you have a steady resistance when you go to set your stitch. You don't want it so loose that it wiggles around a little bit. 
Now if you want, just keep tightening it, like I'll do another quarter turn. Hmm, that's okay for me. Do another quarter turn. Yep, it's okay, it's okay, it's okay. It's going to reach a point where it really starts getting hard. And some of them, I think it depends on the spring. Like, look, I tighten this as hard, as, as far as it would go. Okay? And this is, this is too hard to move. It, it takes too much effort to move that. So I'm going to go in and just back it off. Maybe that's a better way to tell you. When you tighten that screw, just tighten it all the way and see where you're at. And like in my case, I'm going to have to back off a little bit. Ooh. See, what was that? Maybe an eighth of a turn. Oh, that's nice. That's good. It's going to stay where I put it without locking the slide in. And it's firm but it, it's not too firm for me to move where I want it to move. Perfecto! Okay. So, there's a couple approaches on the feed or stitch regulator, whatever you want to call it. You can take the whole thing out. Uh, if you need to replace a stud or a rusted part or something like that, um, cleaning it. You can just take these end pieces off, pull the plate and kind of clean it in place. You could even go in with a brush or a q-tip and alcohol and just clean up any gunk that's in there and put some fresh oil in there. If you ever think it needs oil to be serviced you can just loosen that plate and you can go in there and and like I can see the slide block area right there and I can put a drop of oil and I can put it up on the top of the regulator just above the regulator and against the forked connection and get a drop of oil down in there like that just to rub it I mean drip it down on the slide block too because this has to swivel and of course it has to slide in the regulator. I think that's it. Thanks for tuning in. I hope that was worth your time and uh, I hope you never really have a problem with it but if you do or if you you know buy a used vintage machine like this and it's got a bent regulator or some of these parts missing at least you know how to assemble it and what parts you need. Okay. And I hope you'll have time to come back and see me in the future. Take care.